Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video I'll introduce complex analysis with you. So what is complex analysis all about? So we'll start the introduction with complex numbers, right? So if you check the number system, in the very beginning we had the natural numbers starting from 1, 2, 3, right? When we And we had the basic four operations as plus, minus, multiplication and division, right? So when we were when we started with the natural numbers, it was easy to add the numbers because when we added the numbers, we got a new number, right? But when we were subtracting the numbers, if the number was bigger and the num other number was smaller, it was easy to subtract also, right? But when we were subtracting the same numbers, then what happened? If I subtracted two minus two, then the number that was we were getting, it was not belonging to the natural number system, and hence zero was invented and that gave rise to the whole number system right again when operation started with whole numbers again it was easy to now add subtract but then the problem was that when we subtracted a smaller number and a bigger number we were getting negative numbers and negative numbers were not there in whole numbers and then the introduction of integers came into being that is negative numbers zero and all the positive numbers right but then again plus minus multiplication was going fine but when we were dividing two numbers then either the numbers if the numbers were completely divisible then it was in the integers but when the numbers were not completely divisible then we were either getting terminating decimal numbers or non-terminating decimal numbers right so that gave rise to the fraction so that were the rational numbers and hence when, when, when we got the non-terminating decimal numbers, that gave rise to the irrational numbers, right? And then altogether, the numbers were called as the real number system, right? Now, everything was going fine, but when we solve the equations of the type x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, you can see that the discriminant is less than 0, and hence, the introduction of minus 1 under root was given as iota, right? And from there, the imaginary numbers came into existence, right? So now we are dealing with complex analysis. That means we will be dealing with functions which are dependent on some complex variable, right? So who were all the mathematicians who were behind the theory of complex variables? We had Cauchy, we had Riemann, we had Weistras, and we had Legenda, right? So all these mathematicians they were behind the complex variables now what are the applications of complex variables complex analysis is used in analog electronic design the wave function of quantum mechanics and quantum field theory is complex valued complex analysis is more recently finding application in neurosciences and economics in mechanical design complex variables allow polynomial equations to be solved that would otherwise be unsolvable. It is also used to solve certain real valued definite integrals via residue method. It is also the concept of conformal mapping is a very, it is used in a real life applications like cartography, airplane wing design, and there are many more applications of complex variable, right? So now let us understand that what are basically functions of complex variables. As I said that so far, we have done a function of one variable f of x or we have done a function of two variables x and y. Now here x and x and y are both real variables, right? Now when we say that a function is dependent on a complex variable z, so how is z defined? z is defined as x plus iota y where both x and y are real variables, right? So that makes z as a complex variable. So any function that is mapping z to f of z that is called a function of complex variable so what are the notations we will follow the complex variable as z and z will be always written as x plus iota y the function f of z is called w and you can convert it into real and imaginary part and the real part is u and the imaginary part is called v right so any complex function will be w that is equal to u plus iota now, what is the geometrical interpretation or you can say what is the geometrical representation of a complex function? So, what is basically a function? It takes the elements from the domain set to the elements in the 
codomain set, right? So here, what is the domain? The domain is the Z plane. This is called the Z plane, right? So why is it called the Z plane? Because it is having the variables X and Y. So the real axis is the variable X and the imaginary axis is the variable Y. So suppose this point is Z and Z is represented as X plus iota Y. Then it will be mapped. A function f will take this point z to the point w where w is u plus iota v this is the w plane and this is the v plane because w is u plus iota v and this is called the w plane. so what is the graphical representation you can see that f of z is a function which takes the transformation of z to w right so we plot the z plane and the w plane and function takes the values from the z plane to the w plane, right? Now, a very elementary question. How to find out the real and the imaginary parts of any complex function? So suppose f of z is given to us as z squared plus 3z and you have to calculate u and v. So u is the real part of fz. That means I can say that u is the real part of w and v is the imaginary part of w right so how to calculate instead of z we will replace it with x plus iota y so z becomes x plus iota y whole square plus 3 times x plus iota y so when you open up the square you will get x square minus y square plus iota times 2xy plus 3x plus iota 3x so you can collect all the real variables so it is x square minus y square plus 3x and when you Combine all the imaginary parts, we get iota common 2xy plus 3y. So from here, the real part is x squared minus y squared plus 3x. And the imaginary part is 2xy plus 3y. Right? So I hope this question is clear. Right? And that's all for this. So in the next video, I'll tell you about the concept of limits. So thank you for watching. And if you like the video, do hit the like button. And those of you who haven't subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Believe in yourself and you will definitely exceed. Have a nice day.